How is everybody? Hello there, Victoria. Hello, Randy. All right, we're live, we're ready to go. We're gonna go hot and heavy. We have a good bit to cover today. And what I wanna do is uh, start with my content and move along with super chat questions and then regular questions. I wanna welcome everyone. Uh, before we begin, Please, please, please understand that this is an explicit broadcast. You will hear some profanity, uh, very little of it, if any, mine, but you will find that we have some people uh, that I'm going to feature today that are very profane, one of them in particular. So you're going to hear clips from that. So if you have children, please have them leave or leave the room. Or uh, if you are sensitive to criticism, hello, Debbie. Hello, Maribel. Hello, JJ. Hey, I, I, uh, I'm going to get with you on that resume, man. That's it, but you did, you, it looks good. <laughs> You're sensitive. Come on, JJ. Uh, we want to have fun today, but this is actually a very serious broadcast. Uh, a lot of you have questions about the snake diet guy, and I'm going to, uh, figure out a way to share my screen for some of this. But anyway, we are going to be getting started pretty soon once I get back, once I figure out how to share my screen, but it's okay. Uh, so again, a lot of you are having questions about uh, snake diet, dude. Please, please, please don't assume. Uh, don't, please don't listen to this guy. Um, Cole Robinson, also known as uh, the uh, snake diet guy, has teamed up with Elliot Hulse. And both of these guys have very questionable ethics as well as things about them that cancel out a lot of their, uh, the good that they do. Um, a lot of their the, the things they say are very uh, kind of chauvinistic in a way. They're not, and they, they claim to be rooted in common sense, but they're really not. Um, and that's why I think you should be careful with a lot of what they say. But first of all, so many people ask about this snake juice business. Let me tell you what I think of this. Uh, according to a snake diet guy, this is... Uh, one teaspoon of potassium chloride powder, one half teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and uh, an optional one half teaspoon of magnesium sulfate. Or you could go and get a, uh, a Gatorade, a zero Gatorade, and have the same effect, have the electrolytes without all that business. It's just going to sink to the bottom of the, the bottle. I don't see the point of that. I don't think you're, you're going to feel very much better. If you're low on potassium and you're having cramps, I think there are other ways to do it that are a lot simpler, like getting a Gatorade or something else with, with, uh, with electrolytes. But I don't see that there's any real magic to any of that. I don't know why people think that that would be so much helpful. Uh, Cole Robinson has... Uh, basically, he's the hardest guy to listen to. But as we begin, I want to talk about both Elliot and Cole. Cole, they're very different people. For those of you who haven't had my advanced uh, consultation, this won't make a lot of sense to you, but if you have, it will. Uh, Cole Robinson is a mad, glad communicator. He's about 90%, 95% mad, and he's a 5 to 10% glad. And basically what that means is, he is uh, very high dominant. He is very experientialist. He is low theoretical, so he doesn't think much about some of the things that he says. He loves an audience and he loves an influence. He loves to hear himself talk, but he really doesn't have beyond experience and 
being right about some things from self-experimentation, he really doesn't have a lot of sense. Now he's teamed up with Elliot Hulse. Elliot Hulse is kind of the opposite. He's a mad scared. Uh, he's a high dominant mad, but he's also a scared and a scared is an information seeker. So he's a philosopher, a questioner. Now I used to follow and be really impressed with Elliot Hulse. He used to have a lot of wisdom. He used to, if you go back to 2011, 2012, 2014, he was really doing well. But like a lot of people who turned to the dark side, he went through life and he figured out he tore both his biceps. He was in the hospital for a while and he had kind of a cognitive dissonance, an early midlife crisis. And he started to realize, like a lot of people do, that you're not going to be strong and young forever. So what he did is he turned to the dark side and he decided to take down a whole bunch of his videos and he quit making videos for a while. He put up one for one day and he basically went through a classic cognitive dissonance. He questioned every single thing he believed in and then he got religious. So before he reemerged on the scene, he became very religious. Uh, people who are scared, the analytical types, uh, especially if they're a direct communicator, often fall for religion. They uh, they find meaning. And he reemerged as a person who claimed religion later in life. Well, when you get religion later in life, that usually means you're going to take it too far. So what did he do? He gave all sorts of... Uh, he, he's come up with all sorts of money-making schemes, the first of which was the non-job revolution. And uh, he started putting out ebooks and audiobooks, and he told his story of how he established his gyms. And then he started to tell people that everything has changed and that he need that uh, he can sell you his marketing techniques. Lo and behold, all of a sudden, he's a marketing genius, and we all need to listen. And then he starts charging for it. Well, then a while later passes and he starts having different weirder videos and he starts telling people um, that uh, women are what's wrong with society, essentially. And he starts going on and on and on about the shortcomings of women. So I'm going to quote, I'm going to play here uh, a, a segment from uh, the, uh, I'm going to link to all of this, by the way, uh, from the last broadcast of the, uh, Cole Robinson and Elliot Hulse, and it's uh, it's called Prolonged Fasting for Mind, Muscle, and Manliness with Cole Robinson, the Snake Diet Wizard. Uh, but here it is. I'm going to start it back a little bit, and you're going to hear a lot of profanity and a lot of profane, uh, ridiculous things, but uh, he's right about some of the things. He's wrong about a lot of others. So here goes. America, he gets fucking fried over the coals for it. Right. So that's the other problem. So it's like the men up in the higher higher status men that like make the laws and shit's actually where the problem's got to fucking be st started first. Cause like guys like me and you, like we, you know, we can, we can enlighten people on this, but there's always like, say if a guy makes a law up, up like way up top in the legal system, like if the, if it, maybe if his wife's like some fat feminist, that's going to have a pretty big effect on fucking oh, yeah. if he passes a law or not. Right. Like, right. And, and so that's like the big problem that the women have no leaders. And the right. men are, that's the problem. The women have no fucking leaders. And, you know, most, a lot of women will be like, I don't need a man or I fucking, or, you're not a fucking leader. Like, fuck, if you threw fucking a bunch of women on an island by themselves, they'd fucking die in a month. You know, because they would just, they just wouldn't be, they're, they're just not rational enough. They wouldn't be able to take care of themselves. They don't have the skills like men. And like, they have skills with other stuff, you know, right. like, you know, they're amazing for having babies and raising babies and, and they calm down situations. Like it's that yin and yang thing. Right. But like well, men on an island, fuck, they'll be building houses and everything with it, you know? And they get along better too. And I always talk about that with that tribal, like men get along. They make actually deeper relationships with each other than women do with other women. Uh, I know this is kind of weird, guys. I didn't, I, found, I didn't find a way to share a screen on this, if anybody knows. But the whole the basically the the general tenor of the whole podcast is a very male slanted pod now here's the thing I, i'm divorced i should be bitter i'm not bitter these guys act like some of these other channels where the guy gets wronged by a woman in a divorce court and they go on some women or witches sort of thing so 
it's it's yes, Sherry. He's he's he sounds really stupid because he mo he's not completely stupid, but he's pretty close to the way there. The only experience he draws on is his own experience, and he's found uh, a big influence in Elliot Hulse's cult. And Elliot Hulse actually uh, actually is growing. This is really disturbing. So uh, Elliot supposedly found him, and the whole podcast is a big, long bromance between these two, and it's rather sickening because the, the truths that they bring out in the about fasting are kind of good, but the problem becomes uh, this crazy, misplaced anger, this macho, alpha male BS that keeps going around. And the whole podcast is filled with profanity, every other word. Uh, it's it's very negative and it's senseless. You know, any man who's lived in the real world knows that there are differences between men and women. Uh, they don't think the same. I'm on board there. I am a card-carrying conservative. So it's not like I am a white knight cuck, to, to use his terminology. This isn't This isn't like that at all. But what he actually degenerates into is a complete cesspool of garbage. So what is useful about the talk is, is actually numbed out by his own selfish ego. Now, he's one of ego, but Elliot Hulse is actually worse, and I'll tell you why. But again, because Elliot Hulse decided somewhere along the way that he deserves more. He hated being broke and he hated struggling to get his gym going. But then he closed his gym and decided to sell a bunch of knowledge. And so if you go to groundingcamp.com, and I'll link to the videos, and you go to the bottom, you're going to see a bunch of guys uh, with painting on them with their shirts off. And that's about the gayest thing you can, <laughs> you can do. And a bunch of people doing chants. And it, it looks like a uh, Pentecostal worship ceremony where everybody's speaking in tongues. This is crazy stuff. Um, so I don't want to offend uh, anybody who happens to be religious, but this is a cult trance sort of thing. And of course, what a uh, Hulse is doing is he's capitalizing on people who are betas. He's an alpha and he, you know, here alpha and here he is being, he's finding these betas and he's taking their money. Uh, we're going to get to nature crafts. We're going to get to uh, more, but we're going to, we're going to circle back, but but uh, Elliot has started to go off for a long time now, and he started to struggle. And you can see that in his videos and in his uh, in the nature of basically everything he says. So he's more the philosopher. And if you watch the whole podcast, you see how well Elliot listens, because ultimately he's still insecure. He's still hungry. He's he's the high theoretical. So he's more of a reflector, a thinker, a philosopher. And uh, Cole is not. Cole is speaking to anyone who will listen to him and who will give him the time of day. One of the things that uh, you can read about online is how this guy's been banned from various gyms in Canada, Cole Robinson. Uh, he actually was called out by on Business Insider for some of the same uh, snake juice claims. Uh, one of the things that he, uh, he you know, recommends is this 4,000 sodium snake juice thing, 4,000 milligrams of sodium per day, which by the way is terrible if you have high blood pressure. It is terrible if you have heart arrhythmia or AFib because it's going to offset the your body, your, your body's ability to use the normal electrolytes that you consume. There are smarter ways to get uh, to get electrolytes than drinking so-called snake juice. So this guy is out for him. Uh, he grandstands and talks about how good he is in uh, in the in the uh, the little podcast that I just alluded to, which I'll link to. But this grounding camp business, he's now in league with a growing uh, influence of people online, and they're they're an influence that says, "Hey, basically, I'm we're against." this feminist movement. Well, I stand with you if you're against craziness, but I don't stand with you about this other thing. Now, uh, here's one more audio clip. And uh, this is Elliot Hulse denying, or basically denying that women have a right to vote. Like, yeah, you said, I'm sorry, but there's no women allowed at this event and mm -hmm. that's it. So you, mm -hmm. you know, you put that line in the sand. What do you say to the women that say, Elliot, we need this stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, these are the caveman days. We fought for equal rights. Mm -hmm. We should be there. You know, we're missing a big thing, and we're giving the wrong message to our men. And I'm sure men tell you that too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There are lots of 
beta men out there. Is that a beta man that says that? Yeah, I think it's, so. That's a, is that a definition? Because they're saying what they think women want to hear, hear. You know, their mommies taught them to be good boys. And they think that by being more agreeable that women are more attracted to them. So they're that, they got the, like white knight thing going on where they're standing up for, for women. But at the same time, they're standing down for men. Does that also not, though, potentially hurt us as a society? Because, you know, if we didn't have the women's right to vote or mm -hmm. equal rights, would we not lose a tremendous resource? I mean, there's a point where a male-only kind of dominant society does hurt itself. No? Should women have the right to vote? Here we go. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> you know, so... I'm going to pass on that one only because, you know, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So there you have it. A guy who uh, he's asked if uh, directly, if he thinks women should have the right to vote, he says, I'm not sure. Uh, he was called out by uh, vegan gains properly uh, for, for this sort of bullshit. This is crazy. This is crazy stuff. And they are gaining steam. He is building these strength camps and guys between 18 and 34 are flocking to this business to find themselves and be their best version. Do you see how lingo is powerful? Do you see how people lead? I understand some of you are, are very attracted to this sort of thing. You're attracted to a leader, especially a guy who's obviously in physically good shape, who is well-spoken and charismatic. That's It's understandable if you're attracted by that. But remember, what he stands for is capitalizing on outrage. We're tired of hearing about special interest groups and people getting things they don't deserve and crazy feminism and social justice warriors. So he's taking that and he's capitalizing on it for his own financial purpose. So if you ask, does he have your best interest at heart? I don't think you can say he does. Power is attractive. Tammy says power is attractive, but brutality is not. So yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. So go to grounding camp and you will, and click on the videos at the bottom and you will see how disturbing this is. Uh, it's like the, uh, Camp Jesus videos years ago in about 2006 that came out and you have all these kids crying at, at statues of President Bush and crosses and it's really creepy. So I want you guys to be aware. These guys are, are they're following a movement. Do you see now why it's very powerful to follow uh, how, how leaders work? They take things that are outrageous and they use them to uh, to hijack the crowds, they use them. Uh, let me let me tell you this, guys. There's other stuff too here. The alpha male stuff. A lot of these people are online. Entrepreneurs in cars. Um, it's a, a YouTube channel. It's the same alpha me, alpha male BS. Uh, it's run by Richard Cooper, and basically he's the guy who says if you've got six in the pants and six figures in the bank and six hundred horsepower car, you're doing well. And the whole channel is set up along with An Ear for Men, which is Paul Elam's channel. They're all about trying to provide a, a support network for men who've been wronged. So the only thing I can think is that uh, these guys have had some sort of bad experience because this, you know, when a woman can be very submissive and can be very dominant, uh, they're obviously not the same, but that's all I'm going to say on that. But honestly, uh, one more thing on this uh on Cole. This guy has gone on record on how to teach parents to make fake lunches for their kids so that they can starve their kids and go to school with a lunch that's not real so that the health authorities don't call. That's deplorably dishonest behavior. If you have children, I've said this before, who are growing and they're in school, you don't put them on a severe calorie deficit. If you just eliminate sugar, you'll solve the problem. But he insists that even if they're kids, you make them go days without eating. And then when you do go to eating again, you go to only uh, zero carb, basically a zero carb platform, and then drink snake juice. It is completely irresponsible and silly. She 
Sherry says, uh, I, Sherry says, I'm sorry, but sheep will deserve what they get. <laughs> uh, I'm not really that harsh, but people need to grow up. Oh, you're exactly right. And of course, there will always be people who will pay into DVDs. And the other one is the non-job revolution. The non-job revolution, like I said, is this marketing. And I'll read you some of the reviews. Summary, find your passion, become master in your field, share your passion, create free content, use the internet to draw people in, create paid content that serves your audience at various price points. Uh, and then the highest rung ladder is where you spend one-on-one -on -one time. Well, who didn't know that? Is there any of you guys that didn't know that? Yes, that's always the way it works. That's the same marketing. You build a platform. You start talking to people for free. and then That's the same platform that anybody uses. How is that novel? How is that worth $197? This guy is just cashing in. Another person, another review. Love something, share something, receive the love. So that's like pretty, pretty basic stuff. It's basic marketing, and it's not, it's not particularly clever, but being sold on an image is. So you see now how fads work. They, they capitalize on outrage. They capitalize on various things that, that people want to hear and will their guard will go down. We're tired of special interest groups. God darn right. Bam, that you're in the door, you quit critically thinking, and you've accepted it. But do you see now why I don't talk about OMAD alone? Because this involves a mindset. This involves some of you guys looking at other channels, which you should do. I follow these and other channels just to see what kind of silliness comes on nowadays. And every time I go to look, I see this disingenuousness. I see this self-serving uh, agenda. People will capitalize on reprogramming a mind. That's, but that's why I focus on this. And some of you get really mad. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, it's, that's why people get mad and they say, why are you talking about this? Because it has to do with your mind. It has to do with your intention. Some people decide that they want to uh, go, for the, go for the low hanging fruit. That's one of the reasons this channel stays fairly small because I'm not on the fad thing. I'm not going to go and recommend all sorts of crazy stuff because, uh, and that puts me behind the curve, but that's, that's not the goal of the channel. Children need nutrition. They are still growing. Exactly. You don't put an 11 year old boy with, you know, who's a chubby kid, uh, on 500 calories a day. You're, you're stupid. If you do, uh, you will do a lot of hurt to the body. You can get away with that at 18 or 25 or, you know, even in those years, you're, you're fine, but not at 17 and under. You shouldn't do that. Please, uh, Jose says, please talk about the supplements, really drugs you recommend and take a supplement, a deficient diet. No, my, di my diet's not deficient. Um, I've done a couple videos on supplements and I've called them what they are. They're just supplements. I don't even take those anymore. I just do the mushrooms now. Um, I can't think of anything I take except BCAAs, uh, just two a day. And that's, your body doesn't, they're not chemical that your, your, your liver doesn't, they go, they absorb right in through your stomach lining, uh, to, for protein. It makes it a lot easier. You can eat less. Uh, and I love the way I feel. They don't do, they don't have a negative effect on the body. And then I take the mushrooms, which I've talked about elsewhere. No, no support of the supplement group. Uh, what are you drinking? I'm drinking uh, big red zero and of course water. So, uh, Crawford, you meant crazy. Yeah. Um, most people, you got to be careful. Uh, their, their craziness is out there. But that's why I focus on this, folks. It's, it's too easy to capitalize on insecurities. It's really too easy to capitalize on insecurities to, uh, for people to ignore that sort of market. And for those of you who are glads, your networkers, influencers, or uh, if you're sads or scared, remember, it's very easy for someone who's very dominant to come up and basically make an impression with you. It happens very easily. Is veganism a crazy fad? Yes, it is. I'm against veganism the same way I'm against uh, carnivorism. Either extreme will uh, leave you hurt. Uh, if you go 
to strict veganism, especially something like raw veganism, and you do not have a really good sense about how to get nutrition, you're asking for a lot of trouble. You're probably not going to get the calories you need. If a person is not having meat at least once or twice a week, uh, some kind of flesh food, then I think you're probably asking for trouble. I eat, um, I'm going to do a video on some of the dinners I do. I do, uh, I've actually reacquired a love for tuna with like just potato chips. I don't know what it is. Uh, but I think better when I include salmon and tuna. Uh, I, my mind is clearer. Uh, I ate today a raw hamburger, like just uh, organic uh, beef uh, on a hamburger, and I felt super. Um, it was nearly runny to the point of running, and I don't really do do that very often, but it tasted great. It was just two pieces of bread, and then uh, next to that I had a bowl of beans. Uh, and uh, a link of sausage. So it was a good meal. If I go longer than a week without uh, getting flesh food, I start to itch. I start my memory starts to fade. Um, I become cloudy and I become slightly depressed. So for those of you who are vegans, if you are not having any negative health consequences and you've been on it for more than two years, I would say you're able to function. If you're able to function, indeed, most people cannot. So these channels where somebody goes vegan, you need to be very wary of that because they probably just started and some of them cheat. Look at how many scandal videos that, you know, vegan gains and some of these others do. They get caught eating fish or they get caught eating something. It's completely hysterical. It's completely hysterical because uh, come out with how you feel. Uh, I have, you know, let me catch up here. Um, is diet soda okay? Let me go back here. Diet soda is just fine. Uh, you will, it'll go right through you. Uh, you don't want to rely on it at the expense of water, but it's totally fine. You're going to be all right. I've had it. I don't, I drink about one every other day, every couple of days. I don't drink them very often. Uh, don't let people give you problems for, it's just stuff that goes through you. It's like swallowing your gum. It's not going to hurt you. Have you seen how often vegans need to eat? Yes, um, because, yeah, if you just have – and the problem, here's the problem. For those of you who, who are thinking about going vegan, the real issue – you don't absorb most of the – like beans and stuff like that with phytonutrients. You can eat a whole bowl of protein and only absorb 3%, 7% of it. So you do have to eat a lot. And if I go three days on plant food, it's time for me on the fourth day – to have something uh, that's flesh food. So that's why I say you can go plant-based, but don't go, don't exclude anything. Don't say, well, I'm never going to eat this again, or I'm never going to eat that again, because then you, you lock yourself into a dangerous spiral of self-destruction. Uh, let me go back again and, uh, I keep missing him. Uh, uh, David said you can, uh, the, sa the snake juice can help you have a electrolyte level, a proper electrolyte level if you ever do a long-term fast. Well, so can any drink with electrolytes in it. That's my point. I did try to make up some of that one time. I didn't, it just kept sinking to the bottom of the, the, the bottle. I couldn't, it didn't, I didn't feel any different than I always feel. If you're, in, yeah, if you eat normal food, you'll do better. You know, you can go more animal-based or plant-based as long as your blood levels are cooperating and you feel good. Sherry says salmon is a miracle food. I'm going to do a, uh, I don't call anything a miracle food, but I can promise you, if you take two cans of salmon and you can get some of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Alba something. Uh, but there's some you can get from Costco. They come in a big container. You pop them right open, and they're some of the most delicious and tasty salmon uncooked. I eat it right from the can. I get like a handful of chips and put them in a little bowl. And then uh, if I have a protein shake, I can hit 200 grams of protein, have a super workout day, and not have eaten much. You don't need as many calories if you do go higher in protein. So for those of you who are seeing me have – 
you know, normal meals versus plant-based meals. The reason I'm all over the place is because I understand the importance of maintaining balance. And some people just don't. Sound is amazing. So are bacon cheeseburgers. Raw meat is awesome. You know what? I'm developing a taste for it. And uh, just what, like about once a week, if I have a raw burger, I, I enjoy it. Um, I, and Nature Craft says, I was vegetarian for 25 years. Never again. I take it you have a bad experience. You ought to make a YouTube video on it. Uh, give me the specifics. Yes, I am. Blood type O. Uh, it turns out uh, O or O negative. I don't remember. But uh, if you can explain why mosquitoes come after me, we can be sitting out in the yard and mosquitoes will come after me and no one else. Like there'll be one mosquito per 25 coming after me. I have super low cholesterol. I don't have any like bad numbers. Uh, uh, who's Duru? I don't know. Uh, you ask, what's my problem with uh, the snake diet? I've been explaining. I don't have a problem with someone. I don't have a problem with someone doing their thing, but what he, who he's teamed up with and what some of the things that he has said suggest a pretty, ne pretty, pretty dangerous routine. I don't think, I think if you study and you go back and rewatch what I've said at the start of this, uh, this live broadcast, you're going to understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I don't, I mean, the guy's right about a lot of things, but he's also, he's going down a wrong path with the likes of Elliot. I, I don't really, uh, I don't, I can't recommend him. And I think you need to kind of be very careful. Debbie says, I have always loved Joe's point about eating all food groups. Hey, if you're one of these people who decide for whatever reason that you have to get rid of a food group or you're allergic to something, go right ahead. Uh, but most people can't do it. Most people don't stay with carnivore. They don't stay with severe low carb restriction and they don't stay with vegan, especially raw vegan stuff. It's basically you're starving yourself because you're not going to be able to get enough calories. It's not practical enough. Jose did what uh, vegan gains had an emergency penis surge. I kind of remember that. I think he had a circumcision or something, but anyway, not that it's the, the, the point of this. I don't know if that's related to veganism or not. Huh? Fernando apple cider vinegar is one of the best things that you can get when you're losing, if you're losing weight, uh, two tablespoons with the juice or water at the meal per day. That's what I have recommended from the very beginning. Folks, it's, it's not amazing. Your body, the plants don't want to be eaten any more than an animal does, but you have the power as the highest creation. They serve you. You are, you do have to kill sometimes and eat. I mean, you do. We're part of the food chain. You do. Uh, and that's, that's what I believe. You don't have to believe it. Uh, and I encourage if you, Dis decide differently, you certainly can. No showers and teeth brushing only when you do a strict dry fast, so no water at all. Yeah, why do we need to do that? Uh, who's Daru? Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, why do we need to do that? That's extreme, and that's a lot of what Cole defends is very extreme. People, the reason for this, this, uh, Part of the reason for this is that a lot of people have been asking about the snake diet, and I have a lot of followers who've been following him, so I wanted to do my take on it. But I don't know why you need to do an extreme dry fast like that. It doesn't lend to weight loss, and it's not its not helpful. So you don't need to do dry fasting unless you're in a situation where you, you feel like you're struggling with something, mental clarity, you're ready for it. You need to be very careful about that because most people don't. Um, David donated, looks like $2. Uh, and... Uh, he asks, raw meat, you're not scared of catching something. Well, it's not completely raw. So I'm not going to sit there and eat raw meat, but I'm going to, when I make the burger, I'm going to 
I'm going to uh, brown the fur the top and brown the bottom and leave a little bit of something. And I'm only doing that once every couple of weeks or once a week, if that. Uh, I might go a month and not do that, but I have kind of developed a taste for it. Um, that I found I find that when I do something like that, I feel better. Um, same thing with tuna. If you do three cans of tuna at a meal, I mean just plain tuna, nothing added. You can eat it right from the can with a fork or spoon. I have found I have some of the best. I feel so much better. My mood is better. And uh, that's weird. But no, it used to be a problem. The idea today, I remember the last big case was in 1990 uh, where people did get, it's very rare though that people find, get worms or parasites or something from contaminated meat. It can happen, but again, it's just pink. It's still cooked and it's pink in the center thickly pink in the center of the burger, but it's, that's, you know, I'm not really worried about that. Again, it's not often and it's not completely uncooked. Now, if it were sitting around, if it were not cooked, if it were completely raw, yeah, I, I'm not touching that. I, I can't do that. Uh, Debbie donated uh, $20 uh, in appreciation of your willingness to share common sense advice and to show people how their minds direct their lives. Oh, well, thank you, Debbie. I appreciate so much and am loving the opportunity to be able to work with you and uh, advance your value. Debbie, uh, go to Omad Debbie's channel. I think most of you know it by now, but she's got a great YouTube channel for additional support. Nature Craft says, I can't eat raw broccoli. Uh, I think Vegan Gaines did a video where he, he, he just, the whole video is with music playing. He just starts eating the whole broccoli. I'm, uh, the only way I can do that is juice it, put it in uh, and just drink it down. I don't love I don't. I have no love for the stuff, but it's if it's cooked in stir fry, it's a great. It's a great thing. James says, "Omad should be the conception of fresh food, not from cans or bags or other conventional products." Okay, uh, let's roll with that. Um, that's great for when you have the time to cook. Uh, I'm all for that. Hunting. You want to go hunt your own bison? You want to go? Uh, yeah, I mean, you want to raise chickens? Do you want to uh, grow your own uh, or, or else go to the supermarket and buy fully organic kale and uh, fruit? Yeah, it's great. Um, the problem is it's not practical. This, My emphasis on, on, on this channel has been practicality. I know that I never would have started Oman the way I did if I did not uh, – if I had had to do that, if somebody had said, hey, you need to always do it right, you need to uh, eat right, you need to eat properly, you need to do, I would have said, go screw, I'm, I'm going to do what I want. So a lot of, remember, you're fighting what you should do versus what you are able to do. Remember, dieting is a lesser of evils business. For those of you who are about to start on OMAD or who are about, about thinking about it, you really need to be careful that you don't, otherwise you're going to get pushed out of productivity because of what you should do. And then you get that that animosity toward common sense. You say, well, screw it. I don't care. I'll just be fat because I don't want to have to eat healthy. I don't want to have to give up my Reese's. I don't want to have to give up my popcorn smothered in butter. <laughs> I ain't, I'm still not giving up popcorn smothered in butter. I don't care what anybody says. You don't have to, and that's the best part of it all. I eat whatever I want during Nomad Nature Craft says, Leandro says coal helped many people. Well, that's great. I just don't want to see people, uh, anyone hurt because of uh, because of something that might be taken too far. And the danger of being on YouTube and having a voice is that a lot of people will do anything you say. And I had people point out to me on some of the first videos that I posted on this channel where people said you need to be careful because some people are doing everything you say. So... That's why I've decided long ago it's not a good idea to do – I'm not mad at Cole. I mean, he's great. Some of what he says is great. I think he's taking the wrong path. But I'm, I'm worried about how, how things can end up. Anytime you have a voice of any kind and you go and you say things that cause a panic, it can be a bad deal. So I don't want people to do – a splurge day because I show I don't want to do an entire day of eating ice cream just to show people like some of you food junkies want me to do. I still get requests for that. I still get people that say, 
jump online and uh, just do like a whole day of splurging and get like three bags of chips and just eat. No, I'm not going to do that because then people are going to emulate that. And that's what these channels are not. I did a video on this before on why I don't do that. So you've got to be careful. Yes, there's no question that people who are trying to improve their lives, who cut us a coal, go to someone like uh, Cole or Elliot. Yeah, sure, there's some wisdom there. The problem is, is it a, a good thing in the long run? No animosity. The main course is nutrient-dense meat and some veggies or whatever. My sides can be junk food. I have dropped seven pounds in less than a week. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it, and you've seen that yourself. What's your take on melatonin? Is it safe to take? Does it help? I took it for about 2010 when I did shift work. I was still managing nights, and I took some. I, I was always tired the next day. It didn't work particularly well for me, but it did about two hours. When it did kick in, I, was, I would sleep pretty well. Is it safe? Yes. But the problem is the longer you use anything, the less your body will make. So you may actually be contributing to a problem going, going the long way. You may actually be creating problems down the road. Um, my sister takes that right now, and she has a hard time getting up every morning. She has to make herself get up because her brain – is very active and she started taking it years ago so everywhere she goes she takes it i don't think uh i don't i don't know if that it's a good idea but if, it, if it's supplemental to you you can definitely do it raw eggs honey heavy cream awesome um I, I have done raw eggs in shakes when I was massing up uh, years ago. I haven't done raw eggs in a long time. Uh, some, I mean, it obviously makes a difference for muscle growth and muscle maintenance. You don't have to do as much or eat as much if you incorporate animal products. Honey, um, I love. I don't do heavy cream. I, do, um, I think it's awesome. But I agree with you on that front. But however, you not, I'm not one of these people who lose weight on that. So that's why I have a plant-based approach for weight loss, rice, grapes, corn, legumes with, mushroom, with mushrooms cooked in them, delicious, and I lose more weight that way because I have very, very good uh, blood sugar control. Some people who go to the lower carb, start, they find that they don't have as good of sugar control, and that's the reason they do that. Uh, I will stay pretty plant-based, but I do, I've moderated. I used to be 90-10, now I'm probably about uh, 60, 40, 60 plant-based, 40 flesh food. I, I've kind of moderated just recently here because I, I find that I feel better. You guys remember from earlier videos, I have done a raw, raw, nearly raw vegan nine months straight back in 2001. And I had so many weird problems start popping up. Um, even though I had great blood pressure, I had lower than I've ever had. I had 118 over 65 or 68, incredibly low, uh, you know, low inflammation. But I was also losing an incredible amount of mass, and I was itching, and I had some skin issues, so I couldn't do it. But um, you find the balance that works for you. Safer to consume rare steak, no nasty bacteria. That is true. The steaks are less bacteria. Uh, chicken is the worst offender there. Uh, James asks about um, mushroom extract drops. My friends, if you do nothing else, add, and you're not allergic to mushrooms, add in maitake, reishi, and shiitake mushrooms. And I've shown on the other video how to do it. In about two to three weeks, you will feel, I don't want to say amazing, I want to say stable, because you won't, you'll stop getting sick. Give yourself a month. If you've been sick, Start taking them. And don't expect a miracle. It doesn't mean you will never feel bad. But it does mean that you, will, you won't get sick. Uh, honestly, I know my friend, the guy that I mentioned in that video, who was pretty kooky, who recommended that to me, 
he was he wasn't wrong. I, I've not. I'm still. I feel great every day. You feel stable with the drops, but I stress you have to take them every day. If you don't, if you're just taking them once a week, uh, I get some people I recommend stuff to, and they don't do it. That's frustrating. That's why uh, uh, natural uh, the the naturopathic approach. People have more patience. The doctors don't have patience for it. They just say screw it because people aren't going to do the recommended thing. If they say every morning stretch, guess what? People are not going to stretch. They're going to stretch when they feel like it. You have to take it every morning. So have a morning ritual. If you have a coffee, if you have whatever, put the drops in the coffee. You won't be sick anymore. I can almost for sure say that. Everybody I know who's done it, uh, there's a reason it's it's uh, one of the most famous Chinese rec or, or remedies for anything. Um, and you guys know on this channel I don't put on stuff that is – hearsay uh it's it's very relied upon it goes far beyond me but that's the one thing the only forget about all supplements i've ever recommended or, or said that i used like i said i don't take any anymore um uh, just the mushrooms if you do nothing else you, you'll you'll feel great and you'll you'll be on the level you won't be struggling with all of the issues that, that people struggle with at least by way of uh, foreign bacteria is concerned. But I don't know that I can attach a feeling to it. It doesn't make you feel like you've been taking caffeine pills. It doesn't make you feel like you've been taking magic mushrooms like, you know, the kids want to do. The, the guys who shop at Planet K where all these herbs, <laughs> these silly herbs are where all these kids can get high or, or try to like mock high, kind of get like mock high. It doesn't make you feel like uh, but if you're seeking something like that, then you're not thinking long term because what you want is you want raw you. That's what the kind of high you want. You want to get up in the morning. You know that um, that feeling when you get up in the morning and you feel clear, but you're not high, you're not tired, you're, you're just right on the level where you have a clarity. It's not up or down. That's what you want. That's why it's so good to start the morning with just a few minutes, 20 or 30 minutes to yourself, and then start into your activities you're more likely to send the proper tone of email. You know, if you email someone, you're more likely to engage in your business in a better, smarter way because your mind doesn't have all that clutter from the day. You go through the day, you have a meeting, you have a, a clash with a family member, you have all sorts of trouble going on, and then it, it takes its toll so that by 14 hours into your day, 12 hours, you, your mind starts to lose focus. And even when you think you have a lot of energy, you kind of don't, but you have clarity in the morning. So what you want with your, anything you take needs to lend to you. It doesn't need to be a fake feeling. You don't want to feel drunk all the time. You don't want to feel buzzed all the time because that's not really you. It's no joke. It's, it's not really you. And you shouldn't be chasing highs. Uh, warning against energy drinks. Be very careful. They can give you hepatitis. Yes, hepatitis. It's in it. It's beyond any doubt. Go look because the B vitamin, taurine, and niacin those damage your liver. Be super careful. Uh, have maybe one a week at the most. Do not. Uh, I have a buddy of mine who went to the hospital. He was taking three a day, and uh, he had uh, he damaged his liver. Be very careful about that. But you don't want to be high all the time. Naturecraft says raw broccoli and cauliflower trigger IBS. They do. That's the problem. If you're going vegan, for some of you going vegan, you're probably, if you're getting legumes all the time, if you're getting broccoli and cauliflower all the time, you're going to, your gut's not going to like it for long. That's the reason people quit on their plant-based journey because they get too much of things like that. So please don't, please don't, get, well, if you go down that road, road, you'll figure that out soon enough. Eventually, it won't happen immediately. You'll feel you'll feel all right for a while, but then you'll eventually start to get severe cramping and gas. And I'll pass just like you will. Naturecraft says I eat chicken, bacon, beef, pork, fish, cheese, no gas. Right. I I can definitely see see how that would how that would go. Every so often the screen jumps down and I lose my place. That's why I'm sitting here with a, like a deer in the headlights. Uh, 
in fact, OMAD makes my IBS virtually disappear. Well, you give your body time to uh, to digest your food. It makes it a lot easier. Butter makes your pants fall off. You're quoting Butter Bob. Okay. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I don't know what he's... Is he still making videos? Um, skinny Pop Popcorn. I have, a, I have some of that downstairs. Hmm. Tattooed Vegan says, melatonin didn't work for me. Uh, some people, it doesn't work for it all. Uh, if you find that you're not getting up in the morning and you don't feel groggy and, and you didn't sleep any better, yeah, it's, it's probably not working for you. Um, I don't know why that would be. I know that some people don't. They just don't go that route. I have a genetic mutation to process dairy in adulthood, so I exploit it. It's hysterical. Um, we're, we're omnivores. A lot of our colon, um, uh, we don't absorb further down. We absorb, we don't always absorb all the nutrients. So we're, we're omnivorous and we have of course, hydrochloric acid in our stomach. So we're, we're pretty versatile. We have to adapt. And that's the whole thing with life. One of the wisest things ever said in a movie was the 1995, uh, movie, uh, uh, the 1995 movie, uh, Jurassic Park, where Jeff Goldblum's character says life finds a way. That's what it does. You, you put yourself in miserable, miserable circumstances and life will find a way to over the generations to get you to survive. At least on a species level. Not as sometimes it might not work for an individual, but we adapt pretty well. Debbie says, have you heard of bang drinks, zero calories, but 300 milligrams of caffeine can't decide if it breaks my fast. No, it doesn't break your fast. Um, if it's truly zero calories, it's not going to break your fast if it's zero calories, but it will amp up your heart to the point where you feel kind of a, like your chest has a ceiling that's a lot been narrowed. Um, again, that has niacin and taurine and B12. Excess amounts of B12 will, uh, become toxic to your liver. That's why you do not consume energy drinks every day. You can get away with one with the utmost limit if you have a but over the number of years, it would take its toll on you because your body can't process it like it should. But it doesn't break a fast. Uh, I would try to stay away from them. They're also horrible for high blood pressure. I like to throw potatoes and carrots with a pot roast. Oh, it's great. I, I can make a killer roast right now. But I've already eaten. Eating buckets of veggies makes my, my stomach angry. My blood pressure, Debbie says, went from 185, 110 to 136 and 80 in three months on OMAD. There you go. Congrats on that. I, I didn't I didn't ask you the other day about uh, – I was going to ask you about that. That's super. Uh, you're in safe range. If you stay right there, you're completely safe. You don't have anything to worry about. Um, too much caffeine for women triggers cortisol. That is possible. I have seen some studies that indicate that. Women, this is why – Sometimes women need to be careful fasting uh, because sometimes the stress, the cortisol response will cause them to lose their period or have, have a, a complication that a man wouldn't have. Uh, it depends on how well your body on a, a, a primal level handles stress. Some women don't, don't notice any issues, but if you go a really long time, it can, it, you, you do have to watch cortisol levels, but then again, you'll probably know because you'll get signs. You would get other signs that indicate that something is, is wrong. Take care, Sherry. Let me go. And I'm lost again. OMAD is the best. It's possible to gain bad weight eating like that, but it's way harder than eating than eating multiple times a day. It's harder to overeat in one meal because the insulin hit goes and then returns to normal, so you're not going to store fat as easily because your insulin is still going to be overall lower. 
nature craft says I cannot gain weight with oatmeal. Well, is it do you need to gain weight? If you need to gain weight, then you may have to eat more than that. My friends, you do what you have to do to own your life. There's nothing, let's say you need to put on 45 pounds or 25 pounds or 10 pounds. If you're having trouble, why would you do something that's not optimal? OMAD is not optimal for, for a lot of weight. And, and I knew a guy, a power lifter, ever, you know him too if you look him up. He was a, one of the strongest men who ever lived, Anthony Clark. He used to do, he came and did a, an exhibition out at our gym. He could eat, this man, I could eat as a big guy, but I could not eat, I could not touch him. He could eat 75 fish fillets in one sitting with a tray of biscuits dipped in butter. And I mean, this guy was incredible. And he had the, he had an 805 pound bench press at the uh, competition back. You can look him up, uh, Anthony Clark. He used to come to our gym back in Hillsboro to do some of these exhibitions. I mean, that's incredible. But some people will never be able to do that. They'll never be able to eat a lot in one sitting. If that's not you, then go to two meals or three meals. And if you, it's it's no different. If a person says, I get message from people that are too skinny, they're skinny fat, and they say, how do I gain weight? Because if I fast more, I'll lose. Silly. If you want to put on 45 pounds of muscle, then stop eating once a day. And for the next six months, do the same thing you did when you started OMAD. Nail down and say, for the next six months, I'm going to eat once a day, but you're going to say, I'm going to eat three times a day, and I'm going to eat X amount of protein, and I'm going to work out four, five, six, seven times a week. Guess what? You'll put on muscle like there's no tomorrow. Just reverse the dynamic. If you gain some fat, you're going to gain some fat. So what? Why can't – why do some of you struggle so much with the lessons? Anything you do, do it with your might. If you, if you are 165 pounds and you want to get to 200 – You'll you'll gain a lot of muscle and strength. You'll gain some, like say, twenty five or thirty five pounds of a little extra. But you can always, at that point, say, "I'm going to go on OMAD again for another six months, and I'm going to bring off. I'm going to cut." Well, then you can do it if you keep your protein high. You keep a high protein OMAD. You won't lose much muscle. You lose about five percent. Excuse me, three percent. So you'll get what you want. But you're going to have to be systematic about it, and you're going to have to be determined about it. So if OMAD doesn't serve you, if, if you aren't able to get, go to two. Go to two nice meals a day, and you won't have to, you won't struggle. It does not matter, Tattooed Vegan. You can eat um, in the morning or the night. Some people really prefer the morning. Other people, they get too hungry if they eat in the morning and they lose control in the day. So it just depends on who they are and how they are. I've had people that could not fast. They couldn't make it to the middle of the day. They ate in the morning. They felt fine. Uh, in fact, that's my recommendation for people who have the most trouble staying on OMAD. Cody McClendon says, thanks for calling out Hulse and the other Charlotte's weirdos. They've become noticeably more unhinged with their gimmicks the past few years. I'm sorry, folks. I don't like to do it. Cody, I, I appreciate your – I hate doing it because I don't like to make a channel where there's a bunch of drama and someone's doing a reply video on somebody. I don't want that. But these guys, you're, they're becoming wacky, and they're becoming unhinged. That's a great word. Um, and the more you watch them, the more you realize it's more of this alpha male BS. I don't have to go around and tell myself well, I'm a real man. Anybody who says that's obviously struggling with their manhood. <laughs> why, do, why do guys need to do that? I'm going to hold my shoulders back when I walk around because I've got to show everybody I'm a man. Yeah, obviously you're not you're not running on all cylinders if you're if you're if that's the way your ma masculinity is. Same thing with money. These guys like Alux. Have you seen these Alux people? They say we teach people to live the lifestyle of future billionaires. All you're doing is selling. All they're doing is selling the, the illusion that money is something. Money is an illusion. Money is just value. So you're going to have a bunch of people who go around buying watches that make them look more wealthy than they are. Why would you create a fake? What kind of uh, – It's that's why, the, that's why scams exist. That's why I had to say this today because these, these guys just let your value speak. Are you good at uh, selling? Okay, we'll just sell. Are you good at uh, 
being a counselor, well, be a counselor. Are you good at uh, account? Are you anything? You name it. Just do that. Why do we have to go over here and pump the, you know, it's classic sales stuff. It's selling the sizzle and not the steak, which is a fallacy. And, and thank you, Cody, for appreciating it. I don't like to be seen as a guy who's attacking others, but people need to know what, you know, know about this stuff. Mushrooms, James says mushrooms or Rockford cheese or another type of edible natural fungi is good for the male prostate. I've heard that. I don't have any uh, studies or anything like that on that, but the, the evidence suggests that it is really, really, really good because it attacks foreign-born cells. Lots of uh, Jose says lots of people around me at ideal body weight and unhealthy. I believe malnutrition to blame. Well, of course, it's always going to be a thing. Um, you know, you know, if you go to Sverage's channel, Sverage does, uh, you know, he does, he calls out a lot of vegans. Of course, he's also crazy as, as all hell. <laughs> Sverage is. Uh, he picks some examples, and sometimes, like, he'll find a woman without makeup. Uh, and say, ah, look, she looks malnourished. And it's like, no, you idiot. You, but it, it's still, some of them are genuinely malnourished, but sometimes people uh, have, for instance, B12 deficiencies who are who are meat eaters. So sometimes it's not as simple as that. But unhealth, is, it will always be that. I mean, there's always going to be, especially with the standard American diet, most people that you see have high blood sugar or high cholesterol or they're low on iron or something is happening because they're they're not and then, of course, the fallacy behind all this and what so many of these studies try to correct for is the fact that you don't have you, what you do have is people that are trying to improve their lives. So you have people who are getting out there and exercising and trying to be healthy, even if their diet is not optimal. So you have to compensate for that. But a lot of people don't care. They just go to work and they stop at McDonald's every day and they, they never care about and then they get a blood sugar one year, a blood sugar check, and they find out they're high because they went 10 years and they didn't do a gosh darn thing uh, about it. Debbie asks, I seem to remember you saying you did longer fast from time to time. I used to be bigger on that. I don't do that much anymore. Um do you think 48s once a week is good? Actually, you can do a 48-hour fast two days of every week and be uh, – Jason Fung recommends that. It's actually a good idea. If, if a person does that, you'll never fall back out of health. Do a straight water fast 48 hours uh, to do that. And you could do that. If you can do that consistently and then make sure you get the nutrients the rest of the week, you could do it. It depends if someone's where they want to be. Uh, I just don't recommend adulterating fasts with longer fasts when you're trying to lose weight or you don't need it unless there's a health problem or some mental clarity quest or a spiritual quest. Some people do it to pray. They do it to strengthen their relationship with, with God or something. That's fine. Uh, but you don't need to unless it's you know it'll help you. And that's why I haven't, you're right, Debbie, I haven't focused on it as much. I don't know if I'm going to or not. I'm sure at some point I will. Thank you, Sausage Lord. I love your username, by the way. Am I reading that? Sausage Lord. I saw you commented one day, and I said, that's a cool name right there, because your day can be terrible, and you have a piece of sausage. Uh, and your day is good after that. I'm just kidding. But it's 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 sausage is some good stuff. We have uh, we're near New Braunfels here in San Antonio, and they have uh, um, uh, Oktoberfest, and it's great. And it you know this festival here, it is really really good because they have these German communities. Some of these people speak only German. They make great sausage. I'm not a sauerkraut person, but they're really 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 good. The rest of the stuff, I love their. Excuse me. James says, before I had to worry about what to eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, it, it was a nightmare. Now, oh man, two years, I just, I now just stated to worry about one meal as, as well. It's becoming a nightmare too. Worrying about your one meal is a nightmare? Well, it's less of a nightmare than worrying about three. That's always the reason people go to it. They get tired of fooling with uh, 
with the, uh, the the consideration of all these meals. Got to stop and cook. Got to stop and prepare your food. Go back to work. You're not at optimal. You're not. Your stomach never really gets a chance to empty, and then you have to fill it up again. That's terrible. I wouldn't go back to eating that way. I'm never going back to eating like that. And if you're having trouble with preparing one meal, man, I would do it. What I have found works is anytime you're done eating, instead of like lounging around, go and make the meal the next day. Plus it helps you be less lazy after a meal, be less relaxed. Go and cook your meal for the next day and put it away. And that way you have control. You're not going to snack. You're not going to do anything else. I've done that. I still do that sometimes. If I if, if there's a meal uh, that I know that I want for tomorrow, I have it ready to go. All i got to do is grab it, throw it in the mic or oven, and it's really good. If you need to eat more than one meal, try eating as many times as you need, but do so in a tight eating window. So in other words, not quite one meal, but stretch it out. Yeah, you can do that. Some people still have trouble with that, but it is, it's, you can definitely do that if you, if you want to. Um, Debbie says uh, that is what we love about you, your honesty and ability to speak common sense in a world of extremists. Well, um, hopefully I'll, I'll be, I'll, you know, I feel like I, it's kind of my gift to not go to one extreme or the other. Uh, I used to be a person of extremes. I guess it's a life lesson. So I appreciate the compliments. How much uh, nature craft says, how much weight have you lost? I lost from 363.4 confirmed. Uh, I was probably a little closer to 380 at my heaviest, but I have proof of that. But I know 363.4 all the way down to 185.0, and I have I have digital proof of both of those numbers. Uh, I have gained back to about 199 to 200-ish range, which purposely, because as you can see, I'm getting thicker. I'm getting uh, – and my goal is to put on more weight now, like more muscle, um, which I believe that once you get done losing weight – and I'm 6'4", so – I, I'm tall. Uh, it's, it's, it matters because as you get older, if you don't prioritize for those of you who have lost a lot of weight, you're going to lose some muscle. So if you just, otherwise you're going to be skinny and tall and emaciated and funny looking. Uh, and I realized I wasn't happy with how I looked. So about three months ago when I, you know, left the hotel, I decided that I was going to get a lot of sun and you can tell I'm darker, I think. Uh, and then I was going to spend an hour in the garage each day. I walk and or run about two, between two and six miles a day. And I do heavy strength training now. So my calories have gone up to around 3,000 to 4,000. And I have maintained a a 34-inch waist. Uh, my pants really aren't that much tighter at all. Uh, and I maintain the same but uh, more muscles. Uh, more muscle mass. I have uh, a lot of, uh, I have a long way to go, but being a taller guy and, you know, 45 years old, I want to make sure I have enough muscle. So in another, maybe another six months, I'll probably, we'll see where I'm at, but uh, I do plan to add some more mass, more muscle. So maybe I'll be around 212, 215 and stay in that range. Uh, I don't, I do, obviously don't, I'm never going to get fat again, but I, I do want to be a little physically bigger than I am. Uh, plus my skin, the sun, I have actually adapted. My skin is a little bit tighter. I feel like I look better. Maybe, what do you guys think? I try to, uh, try to keep optimal, but it's, it's always a, it's never a straight shot. I've been following, Bonnie says, I've been following you for a while, and I just wanted to tell you that I really appreciate your videos. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so I've, what's that, 100, and, I've kept off you know, 150 pounds so to answer your question, uh, 160 something, whatever it is. I'm alpha here for a Q and a now ask away. <laughs> Conscious just type person. So. Kathy says, hi, Joe, my metabolism keeps adapting within days of OMAD juicing keto and stops working. I have tweaked every time I'm all out of tweaks help. Hey, uh, reach out to me and we'll take a, a deep look at your life. Remember your bodies. It may take you a longer time and you may, you may have to, you know, I can't answer that right now, but please reach out to me and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to help you as best I can. 
Naturecraft says, I like hot dogs. Let me tell you something. Adam Carolla would not like me. Adam Carolla hates a hot dog with ketchup. I like a hot dog with ketchup, and I just love it. Uh, I can do a hot dogs and ketchup and I don't know. What's that? Just American junk food, but sometimes that's good, right? Gerald says, hi, Joe, wondering why you don't encourage splurge days once a month. Here's the problem, and I stopped doing videos on splurge days because of this, because people get the wrong idea. They start doing well, and then they start eating, they go crazy, and then it destabilizes their blood sugar. I do recommend it, but only if a person is in control, because for some, the blood sugar, their blood sugar is stable very quickly within like a week or two other people that they, they may be having trouble so if i tell someone who's already eating a lot maybe too much and then i tell them go out and splurge like crazy they overdo that and they think that they have to sit down there and force feed themselves and i've had people contact me who said they needed to go to the hospital for it and i realized what i said about when i was talking about snake diet guy it's you have to be careful what you tell people uh, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, if you want to go once a week, one, once every two weeks and go out and just eat until you're busting full, you're probably fine. Uh, that's not good advice for everybody. Uh, some some people, it really helps their metabolism. Other people, they, they can't stabilize their... Uh, they, can't, they can't stabilize their blood sugar. So that's kind of the problem there. But again, it doesn't, it isn't really... I'm not worried about it, but I, I don't want to tell people, hey, go out and just go crazy. Am I wrong on that? Am I being too cautious on that? Let me know your thoughts if you guys think what you think about that. I, I feel like I, I just want to make sure that I'm speaking to all audiences. A lot of people are eating too much in their meal, you know, that they're, that they're not being cautious enough. So I want to balance properly. Yeah, I am six foot four. Six foot four exactly. Oh, my goodness. And Gerald asks, um, what about your dad, getting your dad on OMAD? I am so worried about him. Uh, no, I have not succeeded. Um, yeah, my dad is starting to have trouble with his sugars. And um, actually, to be honest, I'm going to just, I'll limit, I'll say this, and then I'll cut it off for on that topic. We're really worried about him. Uh, he's starting to have major issues with uh, sugar. And he's... Uh, a number of uh, problems with uh, regularity and so forth. So he, he is really, of course, he's 71. So he's, it's a different challenge for him. Than, but at the same time, it's his own responsibility because he's not receiving my help. And we have tried many times and I've kind of, I've kind of just had to bow out of it. You know, the saying a prophet is not without his, without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Because I, I can't, I can't make some, and that's what's frustrating. I can't make someone to talk about dietitians and doctors. They know most people aren't going to take to make the necessary changes for their lives. Uh, some people start on OMAD and they start losing, and then they have something happen. They just quit. They go their own way. It's just the way they are. But yeah, that's that's the situation, and it is none too exciting because he, my dad. Used to be the strongest dude on the block. 20-inch arms in his prime. Uh, he was never defined a guy, but he was he was the, the type of dad. Everybody sees his arms and they say, that guy looks, you know, he looks like you did not. He picked up the back end of a, when we were eight or six or eight, he picked up the back end of a uh, Toyota halftone. I mean, like, like on, uh, remember that scene on Twins where Arnold picks up the back of that car? That's, that's honestly, our dad was just, he was the dad in the block who could beat up all the other dads. You know, every kid talks about, he was that guy. And now he's, you know, he has slipped and we do, uh, I'm taking him to the doctor in a couple of days and, uh, you know, we'll see, see how that goes. You for, James, you forget your splurge days when nothing's going on. Are you saying you do your splurge days or you don't, you forget about them? And you don't do them. Um, intermittent fasting does not preserve muscle mass. Um, it does. Your body has a system where temporarily it boosts it. But if you continue, you, it will begin to uh, 
metabolize muscle, although your body prefers fat. What you sounds like you've been listening to Jason Fung, who says that, oh, you won't lose any muscle, um, which happens not to be true. Excuse me. I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, th that happens not to be true. If you fast for a long time, if you fast for a week, you're okay. If you fast for a month or two, three months, there will be some muscle loss. But again, you're not, you don't have to worry. You're rebounding while you're watching this tattooed vegan. Does that mean you're overeating? You're sitting, you're sitting there stuffing food in your mouth while we're talking about doing the opposite. I'm nervous about splurge days. You have, you can, Debbie says you can really tell that you have put on muscle in the last few months. Thank you. I feel, um, I feel it. And I, I, I have, I really do feel a lot better. You go back and look at some of my older videos and I was a lot skinnier and I, I had, I felt less good. I was getting less sun. Uh, I wasn't eating as, as I am now. Uh, and I think that's one of the bigger changes. Sunlight, number one, harder workouts, number two, more frequent workouts. And number three, uh, adding tuna and salmon. That's one of the best things I think you can do. I really do believe that. Don't, uh, James says, don't be worried about splurge as long as you eat healthy and choose a classic cake or ice cream with non-extra toppings. Here's the thing. If it's a splurge day, you go all out. You, you do what you want. Um, I can stack down so much stuff. Um, like if it is a splurge day, I'm trying to think when I did like an actual splurge day, I splurged a little yesterday at a Mexican restaurant, but I didn't, um, it wasn't a true, like, I'm not going to go. There's a way to splurge on OMAD. And then there's a way to splurge like a true, like a, a day long eating binge. And I don't, those are, those are where people kind of, don't like if you're gonna if you if your family's coming over and you've been faithful all month and you say I'm gonna take today off and eat anything that is there today, you can still that's still okay. Uh, but to me, I feel more careless when I do that. But sometimes I do that. Um, you know, you say I'm gonna eat the barbecue with everybody else, and then later we're gonna have ice cream. I'm gonna go ahead and have ice cream. But then eventually you shut it off. So you'll find that your best splurge days are. 12 hours uh, to, if you eat like just one big OMAD meal, that's not really a splurge because your body, you won't be able to eat enough um, in that one meal to truly call it a splurge unless you're just sugar popping. I mean, like you're eating cake and ice cream and you're combining that with meats and you're combining that with quick absorbing sugars like juices. You could, you could, you could get, but it's really not quite a splurge. If you're getting a lot of fat with that, I guess you could. But in most people, when they say splurge day, they mean take the day. Uh, and if you do that, that even helps your metabolism a lot. If you can maintain it and get back on it. And that's why I don't want to do. I don't want to get carried away with that because people do get the wrong ideas. And sometimes when you get someone doing something right and then you tell them to do, that it's okay to do something wrong, they lose it. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't spend too much time on it. I don't do the relish, but I'll, I, I don't do the cheese on a hot dog, but I do the uh, ketchup. Uh, I think that's all I do on a hot dog. Mustard, I'll leave it for you guys. I'm not a mustard person. Uh, let's see. What video was that? You wake up in a cell. Oh, that was my video on uh, David. That was my video on uh, the Prison of Reformation. Thank you for that. Uh Debbie says I'm down 40, 40 pounds, but still have thirty to go. You'll you'll tear it up. You won't even you don't even have to worry about it. Averaging two pounds a week, you are doing it. No splurge days is better. Hey, for some people it is. <laughs> Victoria says I'm not ready for splurge days. Hey, you don't need them. You, obviously, you don't need them. If you're doing good, why do you why do you want to jinx that? Why do you want to worry about that? And you're not. Let's say you went today, you went out. If you've been a month, you go out and you have a crazy splurge day. You are not going to, uh, you're not really going to have anything to worry about. So, uh, but again, don't, don't destabilize the pattern that you've set in place. Because obviously if you're afraid of it, then why would you, why would you want it? My mother makes blueberry pancakes and she doesn't, uh, 
she's uh, I'm not a, a blue I like blueberries in a bowl by themselves I don't do blueberries in anything else I don't do blueberry smoothies I don't do I do just regular blueberries pancakes deserve a lot of syrup by themselves that's all thanks for the compliment what is your Ger, Gerald says what do you look very strong what is your opinion on uh, Jane uh, James Fung and his uh, Notes about reversing diabetes with intermittent fasting isn't worth looking into more. Here's the here's the thing with diabetes, folks. If you are a true diabetic, there's no reversing it. You have to treat it. If you are a true diabetic, there's no reversing it. You have to treat it. Uh, this business about type one and type two, it's really non-existent. Uh, it, it really becomes the same thing. Either later in life you lost your beta cells and, and you, you're not going to respond, or you had an autoimmune attack and you lost your beta cells. The result is the same. If uh, Dr. Fung is right in terms of most people who are just type 2 diabetic and heavy can fast, and then two weeks later their, their diabetes is gone. A week later their diabetes is gone. That's what I call simulated diabetes because when you back your body up, when you overload your body's ability to handle sugar, then it bec you become insulin resistant and it stops receiving your cells. So you become hungrier, you become more unsatisfied, you become more craving for sweet. And um, you, you you lose control, and it becomes a downward spiral. So it's like a black hole pulling in matter, uh, star matter. It swirls around it, and then it becomes so heavy. So it's only the size of Manhattan, a city, but it's it's millions of times heavier than the sun. So much so that it sucks anything in. So it's like that. You become more and more and more. Your blood sugar goes out of control. You lose yourself, and then eventually you have to. Uh, make a change or go on insulin or die. So that's the way it is. But um, if you have, most people who have elevated blood sugar can quickly reverse it, uh, even if they're in their 50s or 60s. But there are those that when, when the diet will not help. And you'll, you'll see that if you try, assuming you have a problem with it or you know someone who does. You'll have a problem with it because you will you'll notice that, that it's only good to a certain point. So maybe your blood sugar gets a little better, or maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't at all, then it's a situ it's a there's a hereditary factor and just because you didn't get it as a child doesn't mean it's not autoimmune. If you want to contact me, I can give you four five te five actually tests you can have your your endocrinologist do to see if they're autoimmune. If you have a GAD score, a GAD six five, if you have a uh, I two A score, then they, if you have anything there, then that's an indicator that you you have pancreas attackers going after you. In which case, there's nothing you can do except treat it. Uh, you can't diet it away or anything like that. So I agree and I don't agree. But uh, most people don't ever cover that. They just think that uh, if you just stop eating, it'll go away. Yes, that's true for about 85% of people. Uh, I think that's I think that's pretty, pretty solid. I would defend that against anybody. Hi from uh, New Zealand. You're looking good. Now that you've lost all the weight that you want, would you consider resuming the standard three meals? Never. I will not go back to three meals. Um, I don't feel as good on them. I feel teased. <laughs> it's just not as good. My OMAD reboot is less than a week old. So you're starting again? You jumped off for some reason? Uh, Debbie says, can you talk more about your assessments? This is my advanced program for those of you who I, I offer different programs for those who want to consult with me. I have a basic program where you just ask questions and I give you advice based on your medical history and struggles and so forth. And then I have an advanced plan and this determines your personality type. So everybody is either mad, glad, sad, or scared. Uh, or scared. And there's the first two are direct communication styles. The, the latter two are indirect. Uh, basically, you're extroverted or you're introverted, to, to put it simply. But from there, I go into seven different, I get a disk graph, but I also do a special graph that we use, and it focuses on seven dimensions of motivation that motivate your actions. So if you do decide that you want to work with me and learn more about why you've had trouble with uh, maintaining your weight or keeping off sweets, it helps with that because your personality determines to a degree your ability to lose weight. Your raw anger is what gives you the ability to change. And so Debbie and I have been corresponding now. And Debbie is also doing consulting uh, uh, and, and starting off, you know, in this endeavor about helping 
giving people the ability to take back themselves and find themselves. And so it's my ultimate goal with this channel to help people find who they really are and what drives them. Because once you know what drives you, you can do what you are. And that empowers you to be able to benefit from why you, you're struggling so much. So if you do want to invest a little more, you can consult with me. Uh, and that, that's an option too. So that's what Debbie's referring to. We correspond on that. And uh, Debbie and a number of others have done that. If you want more than just a consulting, just talking with me privately for an hour in confidence, you can go there. But it's very revealing. We get into personal details. We go back into childhood. We go back into different. We talk about the way you learn and the way you see the world. And it is very unique. It also helps you with your job. If you've had trouble maintaining a job, if you've had trouble uh, getting along with people, your family, this is very enlightening because it allows you to have insight into your yourself, basically. Who doesn't want to know about themselves? So that's what Debbie's referring to. Reach out to me on that. Uh, it, will be a, it will be a benefit to you, a great benefit to you. And that's why I talk so much about personality on this channel, because it goes beyond just not eating or, or limiting what you eat. That's just the how. The, the, the way to adjust your brain to think properly is uh, to know yourself. In order to do that, you have to know yourself. And that's, what I'm, that's where we're going with that. I consistently lose body fat on OMAD. It's simple, sustainable, free. Yes, it is. And that's why this channel will always be free. Uh, this knowledge is free. These videos are free. And I would recommend that you pass it on to those who you know or think could benefit from it. Uh, this is not mine. This will never be mine. OMAD is very intuitive. Um, I'm just kind of the, the herald, I guess, of at least of this these last few years. I'm the guy who made it popular. I'm the guy who put it on YouTube. Nobody was talking about it before that. But it's 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 intuitive. Uh, it's the best things in life are, are like that. They're right there. Debbie says, for the record, my daughter and I both took the advanced assessments. And wow, very eye-opening. Can't say enough. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, uh, Debbie uh, definitely dedicated and uh, has been able to see those assessments. And Kathy says, how do I get on a program, Joe? Just contact me, uh, omad.info. And on the right is a contact me thing. And it will be very, very easy to contact me from there. OMAD.info. James says, OMAD and gym, spa, sauna. That's my go four times a week. I feel good, look good, and all my overweight coworkers are getting jealous. I tell them what I do, and they are in denial. Obviously, you've got a routine that works for you, which is super. Uh, how many of you just go for a walk? Like when you're getting frustrated or if you get bad news, you just go for a walk. Just leave the house and go out and go on a walk. Uh, put a headphone on. Put your headphones on and uh, listen to a podcast. Listen to uh, listen to something. It calms you. It speaks to you, especially if it's sunny out. Even if it's not sunny out, though, do that. Get in the habit with that. If you're getting depressed – and especially if you're thinking of eating and you're one of these people that you start to say, oh, what's the use? You know, what's the use? I'm just going to go eat. I deserve to eat. You know, I feel bad right now. Go out there and walk. Walk as fast as you can while maintaining a consistent pace. Uh, I do. I, I walk, run. I do a lot of running. So uh, and I'm kind of gotten back to running. I don't do I, I do one and the other because sometimes you feel like running. Sometimes you don't. Uh, but I do it and I come back and my whole night is good. Uh, if I have a stressful day at work, my whole night is good. I feel great. Uh, but you don't have to run. You can just, you can go as slow as you can go. You can go as fast as you can go. And that will help with blood sugar. It helps after a meal, post meal. For those of you who start to sleep after your meal, do a walk. Uh, I, I call it a therapeutic walk because it's actually good for your mind and body. I mean, it's good for your soul. It's, it helps you have an opportunity to reflect and it makes you Think about the fact, you become cognizant of the fact that there's so much bigger world out there than you. It's it's so fascinating. Uh, Kayla's going to uh, Bible camp uh, this coming Sunday. And, you know, what is she doing here? She's on her phone talking to these other girls, uh, you know, and they're just, they're good girls. They're, they're clicky. Uh, but she's going to go and be away from technology for five days. 
and she's going to be shocked. She she doesn't she's mad at us now because we we made her go to the dentist and she had to get some teeth pulled and she's going to have to have braces. But when you start, it is true for kids and it's true for adults. When you run into situations where you get too down and you think everything is about you, what you're doing is becoming a funnel of energy where you're getting bitter. Don't do that. Go out and go for a walk. A long walk. There's times I've gone for walks and I just kept walking until I felt like coming home. <laughs> and when I came home, I was much more pleasant after after I took a shower. Uh, I came back and I was really I was ready to go. I could read, I could I could you know I could do uh, other things. And I realized my mind was was back in gear. So we've covered a lot today. I'm going to go ahead and close out. I think it's a good stopping point right now. Uh, learn the lessons. Learn the lessons. Uh, it's it's a powerful thing. The mind is a powerful thing. Know yourself and stay on point. Don't go too far to the right or the left. What else do I say in conclusion here? Nothing. I'm going to, I'm going to close out. So y'all have a great day.